Welcome to Seaside Sermons. My name is Bert Allen. Have you ever thought about Jesus as somebody who gave offense to other people? One day Jesus was talking to the Pharisees because they asked him a question. Why do your disciples break the traditions of men and eat with unwashed hands? They were concerned about that. And Jesus is going to talk to them about that and he's going to point out to them that they are hypocrites, that their traditions of men are used to invalidate the commandments of God and that's a big deal. That's a very big deal and it's a huge problem because their hypocrisy influences everything they do. Well, let's go read the Bible, let's go study it carefully, and let's enjoy Jesus and see why he would offend anybody. Jesus is going to point at the tradition of the Pharisees. Human tradition is never a good guide to anything spiritual. Our best guide and truly our only guide that's perfectly authoritative is the Bible. 66 books, New Testament, Old Testament. God breathed out every word. He had it written down in the original autographs of men like Paul and Peter and Ezekiel and Moses. They wrote down what God told them. They were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke for God and they wrote for God. But the traditions of men have grown up in churches all across America, all across the world, and those traditions in many churches invalidate the Word of God. Traditions of men tend to overwhelm from a human standpoint, not from God's standpoint, tend to eclipse the Word of God and invalidate the Word of God. And Jesus wants to go over that with the Pharisees and then he's going to explain it to the crowds that have gathered. So here's the verse that we're going to start with. We're just going to go through Matthew 15 and look at just a few verses. Why do yourselves transgress the commandments of God for the sake of your tradition? So they've come to Jesus, the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, why are your disciples not washing their hands and following the tradition of the elders? And Jesus says, you've got a question, well I've got a question for you. And here's my question for you. Why do you yourselves transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? Watch what Jesus does here. He's going to draw this strong distinction between the traditions of men over here in my right hand and the commandments of God over here in my left hand. So you can see that between the two, it's a big deal. You have traditions of men, you have the commandments of God, and they're going to be in conflict with each other. It's a big deal. Well, Jesus says that when y'all keep your human traditions, you're actually transgressing the commandments of God. And why does that happen? Because they put more stock in their human traditions than they do in the Word of God. And it's been handed down from generation to generation and generation. And people get caught up in those traditions and they think that God created those traditions. How can we find out if the traditions we're following in our particular local assembly are really from God or did some men just make them up. You'd be surprised how many things the average American local assembly does that God never said you have to do that. Take it when you walk in the door and you see all the pews are lined up or chairs or whatever you got pointing at one guy up front or one person up front. Uh, the New Testament didn't know anything about that. And when you read it you won't see that. Or you have one guy who runs the whole show at most churches, or one woman who runs the whole empire. Uh, no, that's not what God's talking about. He talked about New Testament leadership being a plurality of elders that preach and teach and do all kinds of things with their spiritual gifts, but they hold the office of elder. Back to Matthew 15. Jesus wants to talk about the commandments of God. They're binding on every believer and every person on earth. Why? Because God said it. When he issues a command, our response should be, Yes, Lord. Amen, Lord. I want to do what you say, Lord. Should be our automatic response. It's not always like that for us. Often we hear what God says. Sometimes we don't understand it. Sometimes we just don't want to do it. Or we're hoping we can do it later. Well, Here's what Jesus was talking about. 
For God said, Honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother is to be put to death. That's Matthew 15, 4. So Jesus immediately gives them an example of how following their traditions of men conflicts with the Word of God and the Bible. There's the Bible right there. He's quoting the Old Testament. This is from the New American Standard Bible. And when you see all capital letters in the New American Standard Bible, it means that the editors of the New American Standard believe that Jesus is quoting the Old Testament or some other New Testament writer is quoting the Old Testament. So this is one of the commands from God. Honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father and mother is to be put to death. That's the command. But what are the Pharisees doing with that? God said, God said, honor your father and mother. God said, don't speak evil of them. God said, if you do, you deserve the death penalty. That's the commandment of God. If you go messing with that and try to invalidate what God's saying there in his commandment in favor of some of your traditions, you're walking into a pit. And he's going to explain that too in just a little while. But here's what the Pharisees were saying. I'm going to tell you in a nutshell and then we're going to read the verse. But the nutshell of what they're driving at is, when your parents get older, or disabled, or ill, they need their children to help them and support them financially, emotionally, maybe give them a place to live. And if your tradition says, oh no, I'd love to give you something, I'd love to give you a little money or a little help, but all that I've got, I've already pledged to God, and I have nothing left over, so I can't give you any money, otherwise I'd be robbing God to give it to you, Mom or Dad. or Well, we can see where that's going. Here's what the verse says. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever I have that would help you, has been given to God. He is not to honor his father or his mother. So the tradition says, oh, yeah, I'd love to help you, Mom or Dad, and give you a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or whatever I could give you. But I've already pledged that $100,000 to God, and it would be robbing God to give it to you. And Jesus says that's exactly the kind of tradition of men that invalidates and opposes and transgresses the word of God. God said, honor them. Your tradition says I can't give you a penny. When they need help, you should help your mother and father. You should honor them by giving them money, physical help of any type, whatever you can do for them. That's how you honor your mother or father according to Jesus. When you say, no, it's given to God, I don't have a dime for you, that's always a problem. That's invalidating the commandment of God in favor of the tradition of the Pharisees. When you say, I can't help my mother or father because God told me to, he told me to give them this money, not you guys, you know you're right there with the Pharisees that Jesus roundly and frequently condemned because they used their traditions of men, very religious traditions, to invalidate the Word of God. There you go. Invalidate. And by this you invalidated the Word of God for the sake of your tradition. So when you got your tradition in this hand and you have the Word of God in this hand, and they're in radical conflict. You have honor your mother and father, God's word. Oh no, we have the Pharisees saying, we've already given that to God. What do you do when they're in conflict? You always go with what God said. Always honor the word of God way above the traditions of men. Well, okay, but how can I tell what are those traditions of men? How could I tell? Maybe I've been following the traditions of men for years and years and years and years, so what do I do? Well, go back and think about what you're doing. Is what you're doing founded on the Bible? Do you have a Bible verse or passage or a group of them that says this is what we ought to be doing in the local assembly? You see, when you go back to this about, oh no, I can't give you a dime, mom or dad, because I've already pledged it to God, God's word is clear. Honor your mother and father. Don't, don't pull this thing where you want to keep the money and say, oh, it's pledged to God. When you invalidate the word of God, that's a terrible sin, Jesus says, and a big deal. You could actually be put to death for not honoring your parents. But it's for the sake of your tradition. So Jesus says the way you tell if you're following tradition 
is that you can go look in the Bible and see if you're following what the Bible says. And if people start saying, well, let's go check out what this guy said about the Bible, or what that guy, some preacher, some seminary professor, some college professor. No, he's not telling you to find out what so-and-so wrote in a book or posted on the internet or let out in a tweet. He's saying, go read the original source. Pull up the Bible online, on your phone, on your desktop, on your tablet. Wherever it might be, go get a copy of it in a book. But read it and compare it to what you're doing every day, and especially on Sunday or Saturday night when you're at church. Compare what the Bible says to the traditions that you're following. And any of the traditions that you're following that are not rooted in the Bible, you should scratch your head and say, am I actually transgressing what God said by doing the opposite of what God said in black and white in the Bible? Jesus called them hypocrites. He said they are hypocrites because on, with their mouth they're claiming to honor God, but their heart is far from God. Here's how Jesus put it. You hypocrites, rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. That would be Matthew 15, 8 and 9. So Jesus starts off with a very offensive word, and he knows it. He meant it. He called them hypocrites. He would call them a brood of vipers. He had a lot of names for the Pharisees, and each name described a particular problem. Jesus wasn't just throwing around the terms just to be rude or obnoxious. Jesus said, oh no, I'm like a surgeon with a scalpel when I use words, because I'm calling you hypocrites, because y'all say one thing and act one way, but the real thing going on in your heart and in your lips, your lips and your heart don't match. With your lips, you're honoring God. In your heart, you're far away from God. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. So notice what he drew, drew out last there. He said, your worship can be completely faulty if your worship is built upon the precepts of men. If you get together with other believers once a week, twice a week, or more to worship together, ask yourself, are the hymns you're singing, are the songs you're singing, are the things that you're hearing the band play or the people play or the songs that are up on the wall or on the screen, are those glorifying to God? Or are they really glorifying men? Are they glorifying what God's truly like, or is the theology in those songs and hymns and songs of all type, are they actually contradicting what the Bible says? You know, traditions aren't just limited to what you read in a book somewhere, or read on a website under a doctrinal statement. It's what's the church doing? Look at the traditions of your church. Well, I love that song. Well, if it's saying the opposite of what the Bible says, be very careful. Here's what Jesus was talking about. He said, Isaiah the prophet writing centuries before Jesus was born of Mary prophesied about y'all today. And he said, with your lips you honor me, but your heart's far away from me. You're worshiping in vain because you have the doctrines and you're teaching those doctrines of men as if they were precepts of God. But they're not. They're only the precepts of men and you're teaching them as doctrine." The church across the world is filled with this today. You'll know it, you'll see it, you'll understand it. Jesus called the crowd to himself, and he said, I want y'all to understand about your heart. And here's what he said. Then Jesus called the crowd to him. He said to them, Hear and understand, it is not what enters into the mouth that defiles the man, but what proceeds out of the mouth, this defiles the man. Matthew 15, 10 and 11. Jesus said, I want the crowd to come up and hear this. I want them to hear it and understand it. I want them to know that it's not what enters your mouth like eating with defiled hands or unclean hands. It's what comes out of the mouth that's the problem. When you have a dark heart towards God and you don't really love him, but you're using all the right words and you're saying all the right things, but your heart's far away from God, then you know the stuff that's coming out of your heart is evil. And that's where the traditions of men come from that are taught as the precepts of God. 
The doctrines of God are supplanted and validated. They're transgressed by men who are teaching the traditions of men. We've always done it that way. We always like doing that way. Well, no, let's go find out if what we're actually doing matches up with what we find in the Bible. Then we're always going to find what's in the Bible to be true. And we're always going to question any traditions of men that we don't find in the Bible in black and white. The disciples, after Jesus says that, comes up to him and says, Hey, Jesus, did you know that you offended the Pharisees? Well, this is early on in one sense, that Jesus is going to offend the Pharisees over and over and over again. You can't expect that you're going to be calling them hypocrites and no one's going to notice. But watch what happened. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you not know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this statement? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father did not plant shall be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if a blind man guides a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Matthew 15, 12 and 13. So Jesus says, You know, I'm glad y'all came and asked me about do I know that I offended him. It never occurred to them, obviously, that they're talking to God in the flesh. And God knows all things. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. He's God like the Father is God, and like the Holy Spirit is God. He says, yes, essentially, I know I offended the Pharisees. I'm being loving and kind with them by calling them hypocrites. I'll say that again. Jesus was being loving and kind with the Pharisees by calling them hypocrites to expose what they're really like. When you instruct a wise man, he becomes wiser. When you instruct somebody who's not wise or foolish, they just blow it off and go, who cares? Ah, uh, you're an idiot. I'm not. You've heard it. You'll hear it again. But Jesus said, essentially, they're the trees, the plants that were not planted by God, and God will uproot those Pharisees. He said, the Pharisees are blind men leading blind men, and both of them will fall into a pit. Jesus did not say, oops, I blew it by calling them hypocrites and offending everybody. Jesus did not say that. He said the opposite. He said, it's my duty before God and as God to call them hypocrites and tell them the truth and challenge them with the truth from God to change their lives and give up teaching the traditions of men as the commandments of God. Summary. Where have we been? I'm going to make it brief. Here's the summary. The traditions of men versus the commands of God. When you're following the traditions of men and you think you're following the commandments of God, you need to go check that and see if it's actually in the Bible. Go read it. See what it says. Because so many traditions of men that are a big part of American churches, of world churches, they are purely traditions of men and they're not part of the Bible. They invalidate the Bible. They're blind guides leading the blind. Both will fall into the pit. Before I close, I want to talk to you briefly about eternal life. Jesus said that none of this is really going to make any sense to you. You will not understand it and hear it without the Spirit of God being in your life, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come into your life at the moment you receive Jesus Christ by faith and believe that he died for you on the cross. He died in your place because we're all sinners and fall short of the glory of God. Jesus said that he offers all of us a free gift. He paid the death penalty that we all deserve for our sins. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jesus said that he offers the free gift to you today, but you've got to reach out by faith and receive it and receive Jesus into your life. You do that by faith. He said, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So I pray this prayer with people, and I want to pray it right now with you. If you feel God moving in your heart, and you want to receive Jesus as Savior, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner, and I fall short of the glory of God. Lord, I understand the wages of sin is death, and I deserve the death penalty. 
but I thank you that you don't want to kill me. You offer me the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I accept that free gift right now. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me and my place. I confess Jesus as Lord with my mouth, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, Lord. Thank you for forgiving me, and thank you for coming into my life. In your name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, shoot me a line, please, at ChristAssembly.org. You can do that at friend at ChristAssembly.org or go to the website. If you still have questions about, go to ChristAssembly.org and click the tab at the top about peace with God. Well, in closing, hallelujah. <laughs>